At this point, we'll start taking some questions. <laughs> Sidewalks, looking at other alternatives for parking that can be used day and night. So I think that's the only thing that we can do with that. Yes. I have a couple of things. First of all, do you realize we live here? It's not they come in, they get drunk, they leave. You come in, you plan, you leave. We live here. This is our heart and soul, our parents, our grandparents. We don't want more commercial things coming in. You're taking away the little business people. Where are you going to put these trucks and cars and uh, outside cars coming in? I don't, I don't get it from the map. I don't need to be stupid, but I'm not blind either. Where was that spot that you were going to put? Secondly, where did they put their cars? Excuse me, I'm in the middle of a sentence. Uh, from 5 to 8 o'clock at night at these playgrounds. The kids play till dark, and that's it. These people are going to go home at 5 o'clock, and where did they put their car until 8 o'clock? That doesn't work. No, we do appreciate your comments uh, for the project, for the scope of our project, for being a school project. But you have to that, look at every. No, we understand thing. that, and I think so. Can I just, uh, first, first, I want to thank you. Yeah. 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 I think you did a really good job. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I want to commend you because, uh, as we spoke earlier, when you mentioned Hanover Street, which was, I think is the greatest street in America. It's really good. But there's some, and there's some issues on Hanover Street. And it's nice that the community, and it's obvious, all of us here today, that there's some issues on Hanover Street. So I want to commend you for tackling Hanover Street. And just remember, they are not working for the city. They're students, and they're here to make recommendations. And that's all this is about, okay? It's a school project. So if, if you have some positive feedback, if that was my daughter, I would hope that you would give them some positive feedback on their presentation. So that's all I ask. So let's give some positive. I apologize for that's attacking all. them. That's your but point. I wanted everybody to hear me. You know something, and you're, I'm sorry. Mrs. Clyde, you're absolutely correct. Now this weekend, I was on Hanover Street, and you couldn't move. And there were cars. Time out, time out, time out. You're right. And you're absolutely correct. And there were mothers with baby carriers out in the middle of the street, and their horns beeping. They're here, they saw that, they're making some recommendations. So let's see which ones might work, which one you do like, and which one you don't work. So let's get some recommendations. But just be kind to these gentlemen that work really hard on this project. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, I thought it was kind of interesting when you talked about eliminating visitors' parking spots and also making it very clear where the garages are. I'm not sure. I mean, if I were, I, I wouldn't know where to go, really. I, I, honestly, I didn't know where those garages were located before either. I have been to the North End dozens of times, but it's not recognizable, so I think finding ways to improve the signage for those 
areas and basically coming up with the understanding that should visitor parking be removed from the north end yeah. it needs to be explained to everybody and it needs to be common knowledge that there is no visitor parking in the north end if you're a visitor coming here you park in the garage you park in the lot you're willing to pay that little bit of extra money because you want to come for the experience and that's where it is yeah. 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 Um, again the council said i want to thank you um, i'm jason we live on french street um, is your focus was on pedestrian traffic, where some of the issues as a Prince Street resident who lives further down, um, I feel a lot of the issues that we have on Hero Street are vehicular as well. Um, is there another phase of maybe a study that would focus on that? Because uh, I understand with the influx of tourists and, and the people coming to our restaurants and visiting, uh, you know, just visiting that great neighborhood, but it's also the vehicular traffic that sometimes causes more problems than sometimes and uh, we actually looked at the uh, the traffic study. We didn't show it here, but we actually conducted the traffic study as well, a vehicular traffic study, where we counted turning movements. Basically, we, we stayed, stayed in the intersection and looked at which way people were going and how many vehicles were flowing through. And typically on, large, on city streets, you'll see a lot of traffic. And honestly, on Hanover Street, the number of cars traveling it is not that great. The problem is that people are getting congested due to double parking, due to a lack of space, and people not knowing where to go. So people are stopping the street, they're doing U-turns. Yeah. Can I so, follow up? Oh, yeah. So, because I know, especially in the summer, but it's all year long, that because of the intersection of Prince and Hanover, the way it go both ways, and people are going both ways, that, I mean, I live on the last block of Prince Street, and sometimes it goes all the way to Thatcher Street to back up traffic. Was there a, a, so I understand what you're saying. Was that part of was that discussion part of the reason why you didn't look at changing the, the direction of Hanover Street and went with this modular system? Yeah, I think so. And when you're referring to that, are you typically seeing that in the summer or the winter? Both. Okay, more oh, than yeah, the I didn't know because yeah. we only, obviously, we don't doing a school project only analyzed right. during the winter, which obviously there's a whole number of problems or ways to improve the area in the summer. So I think that we didn't have enough time to analyze all the constraints that might be out there. We were just focusing on our school. We have to go to summer school, that's a good question. Gypsolini of charge. It looked like your recommendation was two lanes in Universe Street, one each way. Yeah. Okay, and a double line in between. Um, I think that's a good idea. And um, really not changing what's existing right now in terms of the traffic flow. Well, would, would you propose somebody directing traffic when you first impose this, uh, if it's imposed? If we were phasing implementation, the implementation of these portable sidewalk systems, say block at a time, would only be a couple of days each. So yeah, it would, it would, you'd have to have, uh, you'd have minor disruptions in the couple of days of installation. Um, but so you know, we'll once, have, once up and running. So it would be best to have somebody directly traffic. Sure. Uh, I'm Nicole Rafter. I live on Prince Street. And I've been a professor at Northeastern since 1977. <laughs> um, I want to compliment you. I think you have a lot of good ideas. One is um, better marking of the crosswalk, certainly. Really good idea there. Um, better, clearer parking signs and better marking of the parking lanes and spaces. But the real problem is the vehicular traffic, as you were saying. Um, these streets were laid out for cows and horses and not <coughs> trucks and uh, cars. So I think focusing on controlling the vehicular traffic is the way to go, rather than taking away lanes of traffic on, on Hanover. For example, eliminate taxi cabs. Create a, yeah, okay. There, there could be just outside of Cross Street, six or seven spots for traffic, for taxi cabs to wait. As it is, they go round and round and round and round. They blow fumes all over the, the area. And they're just trolling for, for rides. Uh, another thing is to minimize the valet parking. People who can't walk, yeah, it's abusive. The, the valet parkers are taking up the first two blocks of Hanover. It's mainly valet parking now. If people can't walk to the restaurants, then maybe they could take one of the pedicabs or something. And finally, um, as somebody was just saying, uh, more police presence at the corner of Cross and Hanover to direct the traffic, to regulate the traffic, to stop the tr trucks that uh, sit there and have lunch um, would help a lot. So I think the focus is more on 
reducing the traffic than on reducing the lanes of traffic. Yeah, but thank I, I appreciate your comments, and we all do. I think they're great points. I think that one of the things is with the, you first you mentioned the, uh, the taxi cab stand. There actually is or was, I'm not sure if it's still in effect, was a taxi cab stand on Cross Street, which unfortunately is being underutilized, which there was a study done by the city that said, showed those being underutilized. So if there was a great way to get rid of taxis, I would say absolutely. Any way you can eliminate double parked cars on Hanover would be a great solution. A cop could do that. And more police presence obviously is a great way to get people to understand what needs to be done. Unfortunately, that wasn't part of our project scope. We're not doing more, we're trying to do the traffic engineering, not the city planning. That's something else that would need to be addressed. Um, in regards to that, I mentioned that there were low traffic volumes on the street and that double parking and the U-turns were the major concern. So our goal was that by reducing, eliminating visitor parking and making it so that those people aren't looping around and just sitting on the street, as well as making segregated standard commercial zones where the trucks can completely pull in, always have a spot to do it and not have to worry which we're not taking more resident parking away, we're just trying to make it more recognizable, as well as the valet zones, because obviously every restaurant wants a valet zone in front of their restaurant. But if you implement this issue at this stage, where the commercial zones become the valet zones, you say, that's it, you know, this is the valet parking there is. Uh, some restaurants already share it. Fiore and Lucas share, share valet parking right now. It's been shown that restaurants can do it. So by standardizing those spots and making it more recognizable, I think you're reducing a lot of that congestion that you're talking about. Obviously, you'd have to see how that worked first and then look back and do more studies, but I think it's the first step. Oh, uh, just keep going around here. Yeah, you guys did a good job. Uh, I, I really think it's really nice. I saw, you know, you, you, you paid attention to the parking spaces lost by eliminating visitors going around the block continuously. Um, and, and the visibility, I mean, more sidewalk space, people with families, uh, people crossing the street with children, you know, when there's a car double parked and, 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 you're, and I'm driving down the street, I have to really be careful that somebody's not gonna jump out. Uh, the valet zone is a great idea, obviously a taxi zone, and the big problem on Hanover Street during the day is the commercial vehicles double parked. There's people double parked for everything. And you guys have designated, uh, I don't know what the percentage is of, of the parking, but X amount of parking for commercial during the day. You get these guys out of the way, they make their deliveries, they go right down. I, I, I like it. You guys have a good idea. I mean, everything, of course, you know, can be adjusted and made better. And you would think this should have been the original design in the first place. Somebody should have come up with this 20 years ago. Because there is a lot of congestion and there's problem with the ambulances and fire trucks. And you guys did a nice job. I, you know. Thank you. And one thing I wanted to point out that I found was really interesting during our studies, we were just, we, we came during several times a day to walk around to really observe the street. Um, and one morning we were walking around talking to delivery men um, about their practices and you know in the morning it's pretty quiet there's you know eight or ten delivery vehicles making their rounds um, and uh, not a whole lot of parking issues but we, we talked to one gentleman that parks the Cisco truck um, for six or eight hours and he actually services 20 or so restaurants from one location and I felt that was really interesting for us as design engineers to understand because uh, really making individual zones where they could service a bunch of restaurants from <coughs> hand dollies or hand trucks um, really it, it decreases that all right I serve this restaurant let me pull down the street a little ways double park there um, really really something that uh, you know is very important for us to consider sorry I get your hand up what criteria would you use to designate these commercial and valley zones and I'm going to tell you ask you why you have over 90 restaurants in the course of a square mile, as well as retail businesses. I see this Cisco truck, I know exactly what you're talking about. However, the guy's using a palletized hand jack walking down Hanover Street in the middle of the street with 40 cases on it. Uh, if you look at your picture from Mike's Pastry, if you went back to that Mike's Pastry delivery picture, there's gotta be 100 cases of product there. Now, if if that commercial zone was not in front of Mike's Pastry and was a block down the street, a uh, designated block down the street, this guy would be carrying up pallets somehow. Um, as well as taking, you said to me, okay, we're not going to allow pallets to be wheeled up the street. So now he's using a hand truck that would take him probably five times the amount of time. That's his problem. So my question to you is, well, it's not his problem, it's everybody's problem. Because that truck has now been sitting there, and if 
delivery. Someone just wants to deliver to your restaurant right. with another truck, and he can't get in there because Cisco's been there for three hours. Now where's he going to park? That's the problem. Definitely, no, you, you bring up some good points. Um, we've implemented seven particular uh, commercial and valet zones on this chunk of Hanover Street. We've identified, we've very, very carefully studied how vehicles pull in and out of those spots, where they're located in terms of the density of restaurants, the numbers of trucks in talking with commercial vendors, the numbers of trucks that are servicing, um, you know, there, there is, there's, Know, 80 or 90 restaurants but and, and I also think it's time that everybody in this neighborhood get a little honest and by that I mean we proposed this Frankie Pasquale and I when we started the North End Business Alliance and Joanne ends along 15 20 years ago proposed designated uh, zones for commercial and valet and I'll outside of the fact that they blew out all the windows of my store that night, um, the next thing that happened was, well, why do I get a valet zone in front of my store, my restaurant, and this guy doesn't get a valet zone? And why don't I get a commercial space in front of the Sarasian Sun, but not in front of Mike's Pastry? So now, you know, we have to all, be, you know, really put it out on the table, because this is a very serious issue for this neighborhood. Because and I and the guys have done these young guys have done a great job, and if it is something that the city of Boston is considering or thinking about doing, this is something that is going to affect this entire neighborhood, both residentially, both commercially, and the future growth of the North End. And I personally, you know, my family's been down here a long time. I don't want to see this neighborhood change. So. I want to make sure that whatever we're going to do, we're going to do properly. And that everybody is going to cooperate. <laughs> Taxi cabs are a major issue. And you guys, great. I'm so glad you came down here in the wintertime. But you can't imagine what it's like in the summertime. Because in the summertime, whatever you saw in the winter is tenfold. You've got cabs cruising up and down Hanover Street looking to pick up people. Bang, double, double park right there. Now people get in. Fares get up. They stop in front of a restaurant. They don't pull into a taxi zone. They stop in the middle of the street. Both people get out. You have to wait for them to pay. Meanwhile, some poor elderly <coughs> person could have a heart attack, and they you could have them buried at the cemetery faster than it's going to take <laughs> someone from Mass General to get there to go and pick them up. And it's every single weekend. It has nothing to do with the restaurant tour, the the pedestrian. It's, it, there's literally no control. And, and I'll be the first one to say it. I go outside, I've seen Frankie Pasquale do it. So I'll go outside and say to a truck that's delivered to me, hey, pull into the loading zone. You know, you have to think of, this is human nature. If a guy is a truck driver and he's got 400 cases on his truck and he can not have to walk that extra 10 feet to get to my store, because he can double park and go in and just wheel the stuff in the door. Guess what? That's what he's going to do. So these are the things that you have to look at and we have to address. Couldn't agree with you more. Loading zones, perfect idea. But how do you structure them? Um, okay, and I'm just, I'm, because he's a friend of mine. Brico restaurant is probably one of the higher volume restaurants in the neighborhood. Consequently, he gets more deliveries than uh, Joe Schmo down the street. Now, does that mean we should put a loading zone there? Or should we put it in between? Where do we put it? Absolutely. Where it's going to be most effective? And the way we approach it from an engineering perspective is looking at what's the density of the restaurants or commercial stores there that need to be delivered to. And we didn't look at it as who is the name, what's the name. I mean, that was the advantage of us having the outside Shouldn't perspective. Happen, exactly. We don't need to look at that. What we're looking at is, is there going to be any conflict with a truck going in there? Is there going to be any conflict with that intersection that's near there where that truck's going to interfere with it? We obviously don't want to have any commercial zones across from each other should a truck not be all the way pulled in. We don't want to be bottlenecking the road. So I agree with you completely. I mean, obviously the taxi cab is a major issue. We opted not to include taxis in the ballet zones because we felt that same way you did that they weren't going to be utilized. So I think you make great points. Please. I think they're all things that you guys. I used to live in the Beacon Hill area, Charles Street, 
is very similar to Hanover. They had all the problems that Hanover Street had. What did they do to correct it? You know? I'm not familiar with it. I'm not they familiar. made it one way. Oh, so if a car on Hanover Street now, if you're going this way and there's a double parked truck, you cannot go because they're still coming at you. When it's one way, even if there's one lane open, boom, you go around. And that's what they did on Charles Street. I lived there for many years. And, you know, I don't know if that's the right solution or not, but I'll tell you something. It worked on Charles Street. But the density on Charles Street, as opposed to the density on Hanover Street on a five year Saturday, is 10 more And I think that's the reason that's the best of it. Okay, definitely. The reason that we did our presentation the way we did is that we showed those designs were proposed. We showed you three ideas and we said they're all feasible. Every way could work. For our school project, from our engineering perspective, we felt that the portable sidewalk was the best design. But I agree that they all are possible. They're all feasible. But that was what we chose. Let's take a question right here. Hey, folks. Uh Again, I'm, I'm Tom Timlin. I'm the Commissioner of the Boston Transportation Department, and it, it, it's a great pleasure to be here. Uh, the gentleman referred to something, if the city is going to consider this. I just think it's important to set the record straight that the city, the city is seeing this for the first time with you all tonight. So there's really nothing for the city to consider. You gentlemen should be commended. You know, when I was doing my capstone, I had to do something on Cape Wind, but I didn't have to get out of the Cape and tell everybody that I don't. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the profiles and courage was it to be given out you know, every one thing. Now, having said that, you know, the not then, you know, is, is the mayor, is Mayor Menino tells us all the time, this is a city of neighborhoods. And the North End is a neighborhood. Whether you've been here for seven years or seven minutes. You know, our charge is to balance the needs of everybody. You have a strong and vibrant commercial district. And sometimes that can be a major league pain in the neck. And you have a large residential close-knit community who lives here. Who might never go into those restaurants. Who might never go into that corner store. But you want to live your life. You want your kids to play without competing for cars. You want to park at 8 o'clock at night. You want to be able to walk your dog. You want to be able to do those things that families around the city can do. So there is no proposal before the city. And I think that's important to know from anybody. You know, we're seeing this with you. Anything that you folks decide has merit, these are the things that we're, then we will work with this community as we have always done through, through good times and bad to, come out, to maybe come up with some ideas. You know, I look at this as a buffet. You know, there's some things that intrigue me, but not, not, nothing that I would say, hey, this is great for you, not that we should go do this. No, 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 no. You know, that's not how it works in, in this administration. It works through collaboration with the community. Short and pedestrian crossings on Hanover Street? Seems like it's something we might want to think about. Angle parking on Commercial Street? Seems like something we might want to think about. Portable sidewalks on Hanover Street? Ah. <laughs> no, and, and, you know, right away I'm saying, geez, what would that cost? Who's going to maintain it? Who puts it in? Who takes it out? But, but I don't want to turn into that bureaucrat negative because these guys, I tell you, you know, this, this is good stuff. And I said to these guys in the beginning, regardless of what happens here, we need people to think like that, to challenge the assumptions, challenge the way that we've always done things, and, and, and make us better public servants, and, and, and just challenge us to think differently. I told these guys, you know, the one thing I love about this, they'll have their whole lives to make money, you know, I'm hoping they get the public service fund because they, you can come into public service and make a difference. So you should be commended. There are some really good ideas that will, will be vetted through this process. Not any boardroom, not any, you know, traffic counts are great, and I can make it stand on its head and, and spin around, but, you know, it has to happen here. You know, because some of the things that I saw in Hanover Street changing the regulations, you know, we can't do away with the handicap parking in Hanover Street. You know, so the, the emergency vehicle access and the snow emergencies, and I'll be the first to admit, there are, there are sections in Hanover Street, you have to go to MIT to figure out what the signs mean. All right, I do it for a living. Um, so I just kind of wanted to, I didn't want anyone to think that, you know, the city is contemplating anything. This is the first time that I've seen this. And, and again, congratulations to you and, and to your professor. Thank you. Have you thought about um, kind of mixed, you know, not all pedestrian or just all one way, but maybe kind of mixed use? Um, I think, you know, maybe taking it from, um, you go into North Bennett Street, you know, maybe not quite that far, maybe from Prince. And maybe from Prince to Cross is two lane, one way, commercial only. There's no, no other traffic goes down the commercial only until, say, 3 p.m., and then the things come up, and then it becomes pedestrian, and no one goes in there. And taxis and valets happen at Cross Street and Prince, but that's it. 
but just some sort of like mi the might not be the right idea, but some sort of like mixed use where you know it's it's it, it may be one way and it may be commercial only or you know for certain time periods as opposed to an all or all or you know one one way or another. Absolutely, that's a great point. And we <coughs> several iterations. Obviously, we want to present with you three ideas tonight. You know, three ideas that we thought were the most promising. I think that's a great idea, though, looking at mixed use, and that's something that we definitely did study. I think, unfortunately, with a four-month project, there's only so much you can study, obviously. So these are the ones that we chose to run with. But I think that's a great point. I think that a combination of these can be the answer. I don't know that there is one perfect answer. I think it's finding out what works best for everybody or the happy medium, so to speak. So I appreciate that, yeah. I live on uh, Unity Street and I've been listening to some of your ideas and I can have some great, great ideas. What I'm wondering is on the commercial areas that you're looking at, or possibly looking at, roughly how many vehicles would you think that you can possibly put in there at one time? The commercial spaces are 50 feet long by 8 feet wide, so they accommodate uh, you know, a 45 foot long tractor trailer or Three, uh, and roughly how many spots you uh, propose you could have? There's seven of them. Seven. Staggered along from uh, just past North Bennett Street to down to Crawford. Actually, six. I take that back, six and one on Richmond. Was any idea ever thought about uh, curtailing the times that these deliveries can be made? Mm -hmm. In other words, stop them will say by 11 o'clock in the morning because i believe at one time we sat in here and we talked about this to reduce the amount of uh, uh deliveries that are being made now i love the north end our family's been here for many many years and i love a lot of the restaurants here and i'm very close to a lot of the people that own restaurants here but for your deliveries we have to pay the price and what I mean by that is I've seen trailers like Cisco and so forth. These are 30, 40 foot boxes that are on Hanover Street at 3 and 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Now, in the summertime, as the weather starts getting better, that's when the traffic really starts heating up. We'll say around 2, 3 o'clock, people coming in to go to a dinner and, and so forth. And we still have deliveries there. So for the amount of short amount of space that you're going to have, it's not going to be enough because you'll have two or three big trucks coming in and somebody's going to double park. My proposal would be is stop your deliveries by 11 o'clock, we'll say, in the morning. That frees up the rest of the day. As the day goes on, people coming in for lunch, people coming in for dinners and so forth, or just to go out, and that reduces the amount of trucks that are on Hanover Street. And with that there in mind, we won't have double parking. And there's no reason that these restaurants cannot accept their deliveries by that time. I think that's a great point. And I think that is something that needs to be looked at from a city group. I just want to follow up on the, what the commissioner said and what some, some other people have said. I first want to thank you, you guys for doing this. Um, more importantly, for getting a conversation started. I think that we have, you know, we have bantered this about for years uh, in the North on what to do in Hanover Street. I know, you know, Chronicle did that thing on it in Hanover Street last year. I know, I know many of us were involved in that. But it seems like we get all, we get all ginned up about it, and then, and then it kind of goes away. We don't, we don't talk about it. So I, I'm challenging everyone in this room, including myself, uh, okay. that we continue this conversation past today. Um, I don't have all the answers. I don't think anybody in this room has all the answers on what's going to solve the issue. But I think we need to keep talking about it and keep going forward with forward about it. I want to thank the council and the resident association for putting this together as well. And guys, you did, you, you've done a great job. You know, I don't agree with everything that you put on there, um, but I think there were some definitely some things that we can we can take with and move forward with and try to build on. Uh, I'd like to ask one question though. In the when we're talking about taking away some parking and adding parking in other areas, what was the plus minus ratio overall on resident parking? Sure, uh, in the summer months for the portable sidewalk system, that particular number was 78 spaces between Cross Street and uh, North Bennett. Now that's 78 spaces lost, 
uh, at the same time in the summer months, we've added 28 spaces on Fulton and commercial, and uh, 10 out here on the basketball court strictly at night. Um, and, and that's, it's just a number, 38. Um, so we've lost 40 spaces in the summer, and in the, in the winter we've given all of that back, uh, and gained another 40. Um, so that's, that's particular, and, that, and then I don't have an exact count on getting rid of every single on-street visitor parking space in the North End. Um, unfortunately, I don't have an exact number, but I'll definitely Okay, just to follow up with the, uh, the representative said and the commissioner, um, and what is, so, and I, well, so we take up the challenge, but what is the next step? If, you know, we talk about this at a community meeting, how does it reach? your office and how will it reach the city i mean can the city form a task force with appointees by certain people i mean the thing is we have community meetings and how do we develop and how do we have the resources to to go ahead and do something like this i, I mean i could make a powerpoint presentation that will wow you but, but i have no idea how to do a study like this so will the city step up and possibly do a, a task force with maybe representatives appointed by local officials the neighborhood count may neighborhood groups yourself and I mean, there has to be some sort of official capacity to that next step. Is that a question? Well, but just a statement if you were to think of it, yeah, maybe nice. come back to the <coughs> the council. The first thing else. we're going to do is steal all their ideas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I really, yeah. Then we're going to cut out the ones that the portable sidewalks. Sorry. And uh, you know, we'll actually we'll, we'll always do. We'll work with the representatives and the council and see. Oh, just a, a main quick question. Not That's one of the main things. Because I agree right now we have, excuse me one second, commercial pocket, hand over the street and sale the street. And this is where we need the businesses to work with us. So right now from 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock, we have uh, commercial pocket. And a lot of businesses do take advantage and it's open. But there are occasions at 3 o'clock in the afternoon when that truck comes that should not be coming at 3 o'clock. So, A, the businesses need to work with us in regards to the delivery. You mentioned that there should be a zone for commercial. Is that from 12 o'clock to 5 o'clock? Or is it from 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock? The hours that your, your recommendation on commercial pocket. Do you yeah. like what we have right now from 8 to 12? Honestly, we, we took a look at it, and because we're wanting to make, we're thinking of making the commercial valet zones completely segregated for the recognizability. So in that sense, that area would always be designated for that. Typically, valet parking starts at 5 p.m. We think that's way too late for the commercial vehicles to be there at 5 p.m. But we do, we do still think the 8 a.m. is good. Our proposal, this was just our design and our idea, is to go from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. And then from 3 p.m. and onward, that's when you start your valet parking. So that was our idea because there are commercial trucks being brought that are still being delivering goods afternoon. We think that the, honestly the traffic right now is not at a stance that it can accept that. But what we think is that basically eight to three would be the commercial and then three to two a.m. would be the valet. And how many spots without the sidewalks, with the portable sidewalks? How many spots for the residents game? Without uh, 38 at this point. 38 in the winter months. And this was only in a... No, no, Without the portable side was 38 spots. Plus, we, we don't have a, an exact count of visitor parking, but if we get rid of visitor parking, we'll gain one. I, you know, and I'm not, I don't want to speak for restaurants, so please, there's a couple of guys sitting here. So if, if I'm not correct, please let me know, okay? Restaurant, some restaurants in the North End don't open for lunch. Okay, so there, there's, there's a restaurant, for example, next door to me that I take these deliveries in my business in the morning. In my business, which is the wine business, I only allow deliveries from 9 in the morning when I open until noon. That's it. You come to my store after 12, you come back the next day. But that's, I have a different type of business. And the thing we have to consider is the majority of businesses now in the North End as opposed to 40 years ago are restaurants. You also have restaurants that open from for lunch. So from 12 to 2, they're not taking deliveries. So consequently, you have this period of some restaurants don't open in the morning, they don't take deliveries. Some restaurants that do lunch don't take deliveries from 12 to 2. And correct me, guys, if, again, this is, I'm not in the, your business, but I'm just going from what I see. 
So now you have trucks delivering to restaurants at 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. You have seafood companies coming down from Maine, uh, from, all, from you know, all over the state, delivering fresh food later in the day. They're, they're, that's their business. So when I said to you, as I said to you earlier, I think these are the things we can't generalize. This is not your norm. This is not the norm type of community. So you have that's a major issue. And you know, I don't know how you will do that. That's fine. But you will have trucks here after three o'clock. I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, it's gonna happen. And you know, your, your two zones, uh, you know, the average delivery truck in the north end I, is, is probably the 20, 40, 20 to 24 foot stretch. And so you put two of those in a zone, as this gentleman said, it's, it's, it's got, I mean, I don't know how I can stress on everybody. The amount of deliveries that are coming in here on a daily basis. Because unlike my type of business, or businesses that were here 20 years ago, when there were, you know, uh, I get one delivery from one distributor a week. Maybe two, on a, one on a Monday, one on a Friday. But restaurants, because of the business that we have in this community today, they get deliveries daily, produce, meat, seafood. So, it, it, there, there are a lot more trucks in the neighborhoods because of it. And it, it does create a major problem. But, you know, it's just that because of the type of business, it's a, it's a major issue. And, you know, you certainly can't tell these guys, you know, you're going to buy your seafood on Monday, buy it for the week because, you know, I mean, you, you, no one's going to do that. That's a great point, and that's why we looked at the 8 to 3 p. 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. because you will have deliveries all throughout the day. You're gonna have your morning deliveries, your afternoon deliveries, and with that space being segregated, that would be a good use for it in our eyes. Yeah, I'm not saying we can solve it. I'm saying that just segregated space. I'm just trying to point out the problem. Yeah. No, definitely. I, I, you're bringing up some great points, and, and I think you know we've got some okay. the segregated segregated zones are a great step in the right direction. Yep. Sorry, I have to change the subject from Hanover Street. I live on Commercial Street. And I know you did this study during the winter months. And you probably did not take into consideration the festivals, the summer festivals. Mm -hmm. And there are three for three consecutive weekends that start from Charter Street to the end of Hanover Street going towards Commercial. And there's Battery Street and Hanover Street. There are no cars. You cannot park because they have all the vendors and rides and all that. And now they've also started for a couple of years that they take from Battery Street onto Commercial Street, Battery Street onto Hanover Street. From Thursday night, you cannot park there because they put these ropes. They either bring their um, trash containers or the club members have to park there, or the band members, the band, the singers, park there, which means these at least 20, if not more, spaces are taken away from the residents. As you mentioned, you wanted the cars to park sideways, inst angular instead of straight. Did you see that they've made a bicycle route, which that will be taken away? That's not the part of commercial street that we were actually looking at. But now I think they've done all of commercial as a bicycle group. And then there's also the segways that start, have already started. And if they, they used to be on the sidewalks, we had to move because they had to go by. They're not two or three, but they're six or seven in a row. Even if the rule says no more than three, one following the other. And the sidewalk is small, and they're broken. A few people have fallen off. I don't know if anybody reported it. So by putting the cars that way, the sidewalk will be used again by the Segway and by the bicycles that are now, they're wonderful. They're being, you know, the rental bicycles that you can get. Everybody's on the sidewalk. And I'm not sure if I'm mistaken, but I'm referring to the part of Commercial Street that is south of the Commercial Street, Atlantic Street um, intersection between Atlantic Street and Cross Street. Between the second part that you're talking about, I'm just making sure I'm across from uh, the uh, 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 and the Lowest Guard, but I believe now. Yeah, that's not what we're talking about. Yeah. 
Okay. There's, no bike, make clear there's that, no bike lanes on the Yeah, the part right that we're talking about is <coughs> from, I, I don't know if I'm explaining this correctly, but where Atlantic and Commercial meet, and Commercial becomes the smaller American residential town. street going towards yeah. Cross yeah. Street. They, they focus on the Mercantile building and not the, the end yeah. of the yeah. close sorry, I'm sorry, we were only talking about two blocks on that side street. It's more of a side street at that point. Yeah. Where so it's all it's residential. Not, you know, not I mean, a, no, we're familiar with the bike lane. making it all of Commercial Street, it's going to be, yeah. you know. No, and no, no, no. Commercial Street, was that part was out of our scope, but actually, that part of Commercial Street has two lanes in both directions, I think. Or is it two lanes in one direction and one lane in the other? Mm -hmm. it's, it's both. Two lanes. It's both. It's two. Yeah, so we weren't actually looking at that one place in that part. We were looking at the residential area on that smaller side street. That's actually a very wide street right now. I think it's 40 feet wide. Uh, we but need to wrap this up in a few first. minutes, so we'll take one or two comments. But I, I do, I, I interrupted you. When you're you're almost there. Okay. okay. Yes. And I apologize, but I, I just wanted us to keep our questions till after they gave the presentation. Victor, and yes. just a couple more, and then we're going to wrap it up. Okay, a quick one. It looks as though this may be a kickoff to a longer conversation. I think Representative Michael Miklowitz uh, suggested that. And I want to make a comment and ask everyone to keep in mind as this longer conversation goes on uh, what. Hanover Street is. Uh, the commissioner referred to it as a commercial district. In fact, the official zoning is community commercial subdistrict. And let's all keep in mind the word community as the conversation goes on. No, thank you for coming. That's a great point. I mean, obviously, trying to find a way for everybody to work together and have to be easier said than done. But you know, that might be a great way to end this. this yeah. 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 Thank you, Jefferson.